Lord decides shepherd I shall not want him make an eye like dough in a green pasture. Yes, him let I beside still water them. Him restored I soul. Him let I another part of I just not him name sake. Yeah! Do I rasta go walk through the valley of the shadow of death and can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff them comforted I and I. Uno prepared a table before right in the presence of our enemy them. Uno anointed I head with no oil. Me cup run it over. Shall goodness and mercy. I go follow I all the days of I Ivan. Me I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja! Kadama we groma bea tela e higzag beer tanaista lina bashante shante 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 kadama we groma bea tela e this is the black pot eke e kukushonamo where we speak truth to power and my name Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking. Ingredients of so many different shapes, sizes, aromas, flavors, and even aesthetics. Put aside all their differences and relocate into the black pot where they are submitted and subjected to some good amount of heating. Yes, good amount of heating. And in the aftermath, yes, in the aftermath, they produce food. Food that is not even ironically eaten by the black pot and the ingredients, but by us, the eaters. Yet every time, the ingredients and the black pot would always rise to the occasion, producing food in all its palatability for the enjoyment of third parties. It's a lesson of selfishness put aside is a lesson of sacrifice brought onto the table. It's a lesson of generational thinking. No nation can ever prosper with selfishness. We have to be selfless, sacrifice, and think generationally. My brother, my sister, this is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Now here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. It's the Black Port, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. And my name, Black Rasta. Now, my brother, my sister, I have good news for you. Today, we have five very important issues to look at. And I need you to be part of this. We are live on YouTube and our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media. Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K. -K. Oh my God. If you haven't, sub, uh, if you haven't uh, as yet uh, subscribed to this channel, it's time to do that. And then hit on the notification button so that each time we are on, you'll be the first person to watch us. This is the Blackboard and our nationwide tour of patriotism is still on. We are ending it on the 2nd of May. My brother, my sister, make sure that you donate to a good cause. We have been to so many different schools. My brother, my sister, we have done almost half of the tour. Oh my God. We were at uh, um, a Kunfi Emiyao Senior High School right there in the Tichiman area on the Wenchi Road. About 4,000 students it has. And we had over 2,000 students and even more coming to listen to words of patriotism. Such a beautiful school, well-dressed students, very, very well-cultured students. Oh, my God. So beautiful. We want to thank the people and the headmaster of the school and, of course, the teachers and all those who made it possible for us to be there. We also went to Damongu Senior High School. We went to Ndewura uh, Jakpa Senior High School. And then we also went to that wonderful school in Techuman. Oh, my God. Tiobodom. Tiobodom was beautiful. 
Sometimes we have to talk to the students under trees. Fresh air. Oh, Lord, God have mercy. What a tour we are having. My brother, my sister, we are talking patriotism to the students. When we get the opportunity, we get to the marketplaces, play our music, talk to the people about patriotism and also on the streets. That is the concept of the whole thing. Taking the words of patriotism, the evangelism of patriotism to the people. And we are enjoying it so far. The team is ever ready and prepared to do more. We are raising a next generation of patriots. And in every school, we hoist high the flag of Ghana, sing the national anthem, and above all, we form the club known as the Young Patriots Club. The students join. We take them on excursions, showing them the beauty of Ghana, take them outside Ghana to the rest of Africa to show them the wonderful works of our ancestors. In the next five years, six years, seven years, maximum ten years, see how many young patriots we are going to be having. Ghana will be a better nation. The credit shall come to you that you contributed, you donated. You can send us mobile money, no matter where you are in the world. This is our mobile number. Send it to us. And we also have a merchant ID because it's a merchant line. Any amount of money you send, we shall receive it and we shall acknowledge you. Or you send it to our bank account, the SWIFT code is also there. It's a, a GT bank account. We shall receive it here and we'll make sure that we acknowledge you. Any penny spent, we shall always account to you. My brother, my sister, it is very interesting days. And I love touring the 16 regions of Ghana, different parts of Ghana, with the message of patriotism. It's the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Today we have five very important issues to look at, and I need you to come here. Running my first story, my youth. Watch this. Cheddar promises to send sea to Kumasi. Cheddar promises to send sea to Kumasi. Now when we talk about the sea, what are we talking about? It's not one district one factory it's not one district one million american dollars neither is it one village one dam where one cow can drink all the water in the dam at one gulp in fact in one gulp cheddar promises to send sea to kumasi who is cheddar his Ghana's slay king my brother he dresses to kill. He's a fashion guru. In fact, when he dresses and comes out, it's like he's on the runway. Some people have nicknamed him the Slay King of Ghana. He announced to us that he wanted to be president. In fact, he came behind a mask. For weeks, many people were trying to unravel the mystery behind the mask. And then he invited some Pan-Africanists into the country to have a certain concert at the Accra Independence Square. Unfortunately, that was cancelled by the authorities. A number of the people he invited into the country as Pan-Africanists said that they did not know that he had presidential ambitions. Did he trick them into coming to Ghana to endorse him? Did the authorities give him a raw deal? Or did they do the right thing? It still remains that facts are clear. That whatever be the case, Cheddar should have gone ahead with his program. But they stopped it. What the interesting thing. That was the day he announced that he was the man behind the mask. In his own words, he was the man in the mask. Cheddar wants to be president. He is also touring Ghana the same way I am doing. But the difference is that I am sending the message of patriotism to Ghanaians and beyond. He is going on a campaign trail for him to be elected president of the republic. We are already getting reports that he's been to some radio stations in Tamale. And his team has refused to pay the radio stations, having agreed on some amount of money they were supposed to pay. If it's necessary, we shall bring documents to support this. 
Whoever wants to rule the country must come clean. If you are not clean, it doesn't matter what people say. We would still say the things we are supposed to say. Ghanaians are so good at telling you that you hate or you envy somebody all because you criticize them. We don't have a culture of critique. And the more you do not critique even your own self, the more you remain in the doldrums. Think about it. My brother, my sister, the slave king of Ghana, Freedom Jacob Caesar, a.k.a. Chada, a.k.a. Nana Kwame, Bediakum, says he is bringing the sea to Kumasi. He said this on Abusia FM in Kumasi, and many Ghanaians are shocked. Is it real? Is it fake? Is it yet another political fraudster? Like Baumia. Many people have already said that he has been able to conquer and unseat Baumia from the seat of lies with just one lie. Sometimes you go into the boxing ring, you need about 800 punches to be able to floor a man. But he went into the boxing ring with one lie punch. He's been able to unseat Baumia from the seat of lies. He is the new king of lies, according to some people. But did he really lie? Is it possible to do what he said he would do? Run the story, my youth. Watch this. He says, I will extend the sea to Kumasi when elected president. And this is from Ghana Web. Run the story, my youth. Nana Kwame Bediaku, a presidential hopeful and leader of the new force movement, has promised to extend the sea from Ghana's coast to the landlocked Ashanti region. Affectionately known as Freedom Jacob Caesar, or Cheddar, the business magnate, sees this as a crucial step towards unlocking the potential of Ghana's eastern and western corridors to boost international trade. In an interview with Kojo Mahafo, on Obusia 96.5 FM in Kumase, Bedi Ako explained his plan, drawing inspiration from his observations of other countries extending maritime transport routes inland. He pointed to Dubai's transformation from desert to coastal city as an example of what could be achieved. Why are we still transporting individual containers by road when the sea could offer a faster and more efficient means? But they are questioned. He highlighted the current system's inefficiencies where goods transported by road often arrive damaged or spoiled after the six-hour journey from Temahabo to Kumase. I want to open up the east and western corridor infrastructure. But they are co-emphasized. I want to build power stations, energy stations, connect the gas, create industries, and bring technology. Calling for a shift towards value addition and local manufacturing. But they are challenge Ghana to produce its own electronic gadgets using domestic resources such as lithium and plastics. As part of his nationwide tour, which is dubbed a listening tour, Bedi Akun is spending five days in the Ashanti region, engaging ordinary Ghanaians and incorporating their visions and aspirations into his manifesto for the upcoming national election in December. This is Jacob Freedom Caesar, a.k.a. Chada, a.k.a. Nana Kwame Bedi Akun. He was a guy I truly liked from the start, and I believe that I truly like him. But arrogance, braggadocio, looking down on people because they don't have money has made me loathe him. And I'm not shy to say it. I loathe him. Too arrogant. This guy is extremely arrogant. He thinks because he has some chicken change, everybody must bow before him. He throws his millet around and he has his way. Not people like us. This is our country, Ghana. It is your country too. We both have the same level of loyalty for our nation. The nation demands that we do everything possible to put it on the right footing. 
Maybe his ideas are different. Maybe my ideas are different. But there's one thing we share in common. Pan-Africanism. He claims he's a Pan-Africanist. I claim I am a Pan-Africanist. Right? Now we both want to go the same route of Pan-Africanism to developing our nation. And for me, I think that is the best route. Patriotism, Pan-Africanism. But we have differences still. Today, it's not about me and it's not about Cheddar. It is about Ghana. Is it possible to extend the sea all the way from Kumasi to Accra? How many hours is it by road from Accra to Kumasi? People use a minimum of about four hours to move from here to Accra. The roads are not too good. They are not too bad, but not too good. Again, how long does it take to fly from Accra to Kumasi? About 30 minutes, maximum 45 minutes you are in there, depending on what air carriage you are using. Have we thought about developing freight? If it's about speed of moving load, if it's the speed, have we thought about developing air freight flying our goods left right and center if it's about speed now cheddar is talking about maritime transport in other words using the sea and he mentioned dubai is it true that dubai has been able to draw the sea into the country now dubai is a country that already has a coast the Pacific Ocean forms the coast of Dubai. So Dubai has access to the sea already. Now we must understand that Dubai is a unique country in its own way. Dubai is extremely rich in oil. Dubai is a small country of about just 2 million people. Just over 2 million people. Listen attentively. Dubai has a population of about just 2 million people. He has a smaller land space. Listen, as compared to this country. Now, the interesting thing is that Dubai even imports sand. Sand. Dubai imports sand from Saudi Arabia and also from Australia. Can you believe that? If we were told that Ghana was importing sand, I'm sure all Ghanaians would say, ah, what is wrong with us? But Dubai imports sand. Why is Dubai importing sand? Because it is sitting on a desert. And the desert sand that they have may not be able to construct things like the Burj Khalifa. Therefore, they need proper sand, which they import from Saudi Arabia. They also import sand from the beautiful country called Australia. What point is Black Rasta making? I'm only trying to tell you the uniqueness of Dubai. Dubai has been able to do some dredging. And you know how much it dredged? It dredged trillions of sand. Trillion, a trillion ton of sand. Do you know what that means? It was able to dredge all the way onto the seabed. Dubai did it. How did Dubai do it? They use modern technology. They have the financial muscle which they have built over the year. Ghana has not been able to reach there because of mismanagement. Dubai is one of the richest nations in the world from the UAE. They have been able to build some artificial sea kind of but remember that they already have the pacific ocean buffing their coasts what was the proximity to the desert my brother listen what was the proximity of the sea to where they were able to dredge and send some part of the sea water to can it be compared to the one here in ghana between accra and kumasi what is the topology? Have you thought about this? Do you know what it is to say topology? We are looking at the rocks. What is the rock structure? 
in Ghana between Accra and Kumasi? What is the rock structure, topology between the Pacific Ocean's coastal line and the area where they took the water to in the desert? You need to think about all this. Don't just say, oh, Dubai was able to bring some amount of water to create a little island somewhere so people can go there and swim and all that and all that. What was the proximity? What was the distance? Now, this is a desert. It's not a rocky desert. Today, we are doing geography, and this is my most comfortable zone. Dubai is sitting on a sandy desert. We have different kinds of deserts. We have rocky deserts and we have sandy deserts. Now the rocky desert is the one that you find rocks on. But Dubai is sitting on a sandy desert. It is easier to dredge in such areas because it's all sand. But between Accra and Kumasi, you would have to climb Afajato, climb Mount Everest, climb Mount Jojoji, climb Mount Rrr and Hur to be able to reach there. Yes, it is possible. But the amount of money you are going to use to dredge and deal with these rocks and all that to Kumasi, it could have built another Ghana five million fold. It is not wise to do that. Do you have the money? Where are you going to get the money? Come here. We have to think about these things. It's not easy. It's so easy to come out and say, yes, I will do this. But when the questions start coming, and Chada is not a smart dude. He's not. Remember when he told you, oh, and I'm a millionaire, and I made my first one million pounds selling scraps. Say, okay, that sounds good, but it's incredible. How did you do it? He said, stop asking me about how I made my money and concentrate on what I can do. The chick of it. We want to know. You want public office. We want to find out exactly how you made your money. You say, don't ask me those questions. Are you ready for the office? Today, Chada says he wants to send the sea all the way from Accra to Kumasi. Tomorrow, Another person would come and tell us that, oh, they are bringing us sky trains. We didn't even see one head of a train in Ghana. Up till now, the sky trains that they promised us is only on paper. My brother, in a country where rail lines are being cut and stolen every now and then, rail transport is even a problem. Somebody is not thinking about rail transport. Those ones that we will see as the beginning of a big project, they are not thinking about it. They are not thinking about air freight, cargo planes, flying goose left, right, and center into Kumasi and other places. They are not thinking about train lines doing that. They are thinking about moving the whole sea to Kumasi. That is where the problem is. It's like killing a mosquito with a sledgehammer. It's like killing a mosquito with an AK-47. There's a mosquito in your room. One kills a mosquito. Then you go and load up your AK-47. You wear your military uniform. Come and stand there and aim at the mosquito. Pua, pua. Yes, you have killed the mosquito. But was it cost effective? Did it make sense? The man who just aimed at the mosquito and went and forgot about it. It's wiser. Bring his photo. So, Chada, I know you are desperate to win an election like Baumia is. Don't be another Baumia. I think that you are a young man. If you don't have the ideas, let people around you give you more ideas. It doesn't even matter. You, you could decide not to be the spokesperson for new force. Let another person who is sharp and can bring out very good ideas. In Ghana, we have a problem. 
Everybody wants to sing, whether they can write or not. They force themselves to write things, and then they disturb our ears with mosquito noise. In some countries, they know where their strength is. Oh, I'm not a good writer, but I'm a good singer. So you get somebody to write, and then you sing. Or, oh, okay, I'm a good writer. I'm not a good singer. So I write for people to sing, but not in our country. We want to do everything. Maybe you have good ideas, but you are not a good communicator. It's not by force that you must communicate your ideas yourself. Some people can do that on your behalf. But in our country, no, they will never vote for a person like that. They want to hear from you what you can do. They don't want to hear from people around you. Sad. Hey, there's a saying, an African saying that I like. They say, where the king is surrounded by wise men. It doesn't matter, even if he's foolish. He's always seen as wise. But where a wise king is surrounded by idiots and fools, he's always seen as a fool. Think about it. They are taking the sea to Kumase. We heard this in the past and we laughed at them. Somebody approached me. Come here. That's way, the photo. Watch this. Somebody approached me and said, Black Rasta, but in the days of Kwame Nkrumah, he promised that he was going to send seawater through our taps and all that, all over Ghana and all that. My brother, Nkrumah said he was going to send seawater to the whole of Ghana for them to use as what? Water to do what? To eat, cook, What? Even if Nkrumah said that, which is so doubtable, it's just water that will go through taps. It is easier than dredging the whole land from Accra to Kumasi to send the sea to. Let us respect the electorate. Let's tell the electorate exactly the real thing and not what he just wants to hear. Is the blackboard, aka Koko Shounomo, where we speak truth to power. To the people of Kumasi, you will see C for the first time. Maybe we'll call it Kuma C. The Kuma C. Have you heard about the Suez Canal? Do you know how long it took to be able to deal with that? We need to check it out. It's the blackboard. A.K.A. Kukushonomo, where we speak truth to power. Dash it and bring me the next story, my youth. Watch this. Gamashe, angry over Akufu Ado ignorance. My God. Nana Akufu Ado is a history illiterate. He's illiterate when it comes to history. He knows nothing about our history. He reads anything they write for him on paper. The council for Ga Dangwe, divisional chiefs, is angry. You know why it is angry? Run it, my youths. Retract your misinformation with all agency. Family of Tetekwashi to Akufuado. Run it. Now the family and grandchildren of the late Tetekwashi a leading figure in Ghana's cocoa sector, have called on President Akufuado to eat the humble pie and retract his erroneous comments that sought to distort his story regarding the uh, origin of their relative. Tete Kwashi is credited in history as being the first person to start planting cocoa on a commercial scale and hails from the Gadangbe community. The president in his address during Ghana's, uh, Ghana's 67th Independence Day parade in Koforidua on Wednesday, March 6th, said, indeed, Tete Kwashi, an indigent of Mampong Equiapim, here in the eastern region, brought back in the late 19th century the cocoa pod from Fernando Po, now Bioko, in Equatorial Guinea, an act which led him and others to establish our nation's first commercial farms here in the eastern region. That's it. Now, when you read the full story, the family is angry 
Gamashi is angry that the president is trying to rob them of their own son. Who brought honor to the nation? Come here. Tried as much as possible to rob them of their great hero and give him to somebody else. Tete Kwashi was never from Mount Poyokyapim. Tete Kwashi was from La, according to history, Labadi. There are some other sources that say part of him also came from Osu. He was a 100% gun and he was a blacksmith. Why has Tete Kwashi all of a sudden become an indigenous of Mount Poyokyapim? Was it because he was working with the Basel missionaries in Mampome Kuyapim? Every little child knows that Tete Kwashi was never from Mampome Kuyapim. Little children in school and the president who lives in the country that produces the highest amount of cocoa in the world. The second highest. The Ivory Coast just took over from us. Cocoa is the most important crop in Ghana. We supply and produce the second largest in the whole world. In fact, we even have the cocoa on our currency. We call it the golden port. It's the sweetest cocoa in the world. Everybody knows that. How dare you, Mr. President, demean our history like this. If you have no respect for Koko, at least have respect for Tete Kwashi. Mr. President, what happened to you? How dare you? How could you say that a man named Tete Kwashi, listen to the sound of the name, Tete Kwashi came from the mountains. It's almost like telling me one Kwame Mensa Bediakun came from we don't have a Kwame Mensa Bediakon who is an indigene of Bolgatanga. If he was called Azore Nantambara Azorozoro, then we'll say this is a Bolga man. You cannot say Kwame Mensa Bediakon is from Bolgatanga. Neither can you say that one Akwalgo Azore Atababirisi is from Ashanti region. Our names represent where we come from traditionally. And as old as the president is, he should have known better. But he went and goofed. And the arrogant, demonic president that he is, he will never apologize. They are good at distorting history. Remember what they said about Kwame Nkrumah? He was a blood-tested dictator. They put that in the textbooks. We had to force them and push them to retract and withdraw those books. Remember when they said the Everest were only interested in Juju? In their textbooks that our children were supposed to go and read. Such biasness. Racism. What is this? Mr. President, I am totally flabbergasted. I am hypnotized. Ha! Hey! So the name Tete Kwashi was not enough to say that this was a Ghana Gadangbe. Mr. President still said he came from Mampong Equiapim. What a baptismal of fire on our history. Mr. President, do the needful. Apologize for your ignorance. It's been a week since we made that dirty blunder. Have respect for our history. If you don't know history, try not to talk history. This is so basic for a president of a country that sees Coco to be one of the most important commodities of this nation to make that terrible blunder. It's a shame. Dash it away. When we return, we have more for you and we will also take your messages for the day. Hey! Wayo!
Greetings, countrymen. My name is Black Rasta. When I was growing up as a child, there was something called a courtesy for boys and girls that helped to train us and raise us up in patriotism. But today, a lot of this patriotism has been lost. Today, our children are beginning to lose everything in terms of our heritage. They have lost out on our history, lost out on our greatness. It is on the bedrock of this. I am embarking on a nationwide tour of patriotism. Remember, it's patriotism, not politics. We shall go to all the 16 regions of Ghana. And in every region, we will organize students and speak to them about patriotism. We will organize a small quiz competition where we shall give prizes out. And these prizes are going to be prizes that are souvenirs from Ghana. Right after that, we will organize a setting concert either in the market space or even on the streets, accessible to everybody. And we will catch the music lovers and deliver the same message to them. It's on the bedrock of this. I would like you to be part of this. Please donate to this great cause. We are raising a next generation of patriots. It's the lack of patriotism that is making us steal from our own country. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us feel like when we steal from the government, we are stealing from space. It's the lack of patriotism that makes us owe allegiance to some foreigners more than us. It's the lack of patriotism that makes foreigners come into this country and behave like demigods and we see them as such. My brother, my sister, donate so we can move out there. Maybe you want to give us something else in kind. We are ready for you. Our numbers are rolling on the screens and you can donate into our bank account or onto our phone number and we will gladly appreciate and acknowledge you. This is the national patriotism tour that we have taken on ourselves to make sure that the nation, Ghana, stands tall again like before. My name is Black Rasta and I thank you for listening. God bless you. Ghana shall prosper. Ghana will rise again. Bless you. Bless you. It's the black pot, aka Coco Show them. And here we speak to the power. Next one, my youth. Now, this one says Justice Yoni Kulendi. The name is Kulendi. The S there becomes a D. Yoni Kulendi. Mm -mm -mm. How many of us know Justice Yoni Kulendi? He's a very powerful lawyer. Justice Yoni Kulendi destroys. Anti Anas judge. This is Yoni Kulendi. He's a justice of our course right here in Ghana. This powerful man, some time ago, approached me and told me that he thought that I should be an MP. And when I told him the reasons I cannot be an MP, he appreciated that I shook my hands. I told him that I am a kingmaker, I am not a king. And he looked at me in awe, shook my hands and said, Black Rasta, I truly admire you. I admire him too. He represented me at the Parliament House. Remember when I went there to meet with um, the MPs in the days of the Ganja advocacy. Today, they have voted to pass the law on hemp right there in the Parliament of Ghana. There's a photograph of me and him. And then, of course, my very good brethren, lawyer, Tadio Sori. They are very good friends. He's one of the best brains we have in the nation when it comes to the law. A lot of lawyers back off when they see any communication on his letterhead. Trying to litigate. But this is a pre-litigation letter. A lot of them back down and just smoke the peace pipe. That is Yoni Kulendi. He comes from the Upper West region of Ghana. He's such a powerful lawyer. Listen to what he said. We have talked about this before. Now Yoni Kulendi is speaking the same language. Run it, my youth. Watch it. And what does it say? 
in the news, violent abuse of judicial power. Listen, violent abuse of judicial power. Justice Kulendi blasts judge who handled Anas versus Ken Ejapon's case. Do we all remember the case? Two days ago, I was still talking about the case. One of the Supreme Court justices who dismissed, who dissented in it, 3-2 ruling against Anas Armiyao Anas's certiorari application against a high court ruling had harsh words for the lower judge, court judge, who, amongst others, accused Anas of engaging in investigative terrorism. Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi wrote in the recently released full judgment that Justice Eric Ma, who handled the case at the high court level, exhibited bias against the investigative journalist. Justice Kulendi accused Justice Ma of being actuated by ill will and malice in his handling of the case, asserting that the judge displayed bias against Anas and his investigative journalism methods. Wow. He criticized Justice Ma for pronouncing Anas as an outright criminal, extortionist, and blackmailer masquerading as a journalist. Whereas he said showed a clear prejudice against the journalists. The defamation case, which stemmed from comments made by a Japan against Anas, saw Justice Ma dismissing the case in March 2023, describing Anas as a self-confessed criminal and justifying a Japan's characterization of him as an extortionist. That's it away. Some of our judges behave as if they are drunk on duty. And Eric Ma behaved like that, like a drunk judge on duty. I'm sad to say this, but that's the truth. And we have bemoaned this several times. This is not the first time. How can Anas go to court and say there's an MP called Canada Japan who calls me a murderer? He also calls me an extortionist and a criminal. Please, I'm here to ask him to bring proof so that I will rest my case. But when he went to court, the drunk judge, Eric Ba, made it look like Anas was the one standing trial. Outrightly, he called him a self-confessed criminal and an extortionist. And above all, he said what Anas was doing is not investigative journalism. It is investigative terrorism. He didn't ask Canada Japan to provide proof to show that Anas was a murderer. Two, that he was a criminal and an extortionist. He threw away the case. Such a dirty minded judge. They behave as if they are demigods. How could you behave like this? Can you find me the photo? No, you can't find this photograph. Eric Ma, if you can find it, Justice Eric Ma, flash it up. It's so sad. Anas went to court to go and seek redress. He arrives in court and then a certain drunk judge on duty decides to be so biased and so prejudicial and calls him a murderer, a self-confessed criminal. Where is the evidence? Did Kennedy and Japan bring any evidence? Such wanton display of prejudice. Now, Yoni Kulendi is speaking. He's a justice of the Supreme Court. And he's talking against the deeds of a junior court justice, Eric Ma. He says that he did what? He did what? It was a display of what? Violent. Prejudicial power. Watch it. Judicial, violent abuse of judicial power. The power of the court. He violently abused it. He raped it. Anas decried this. But he's a lawyer himself. He decided that he will sit down and watch. Anas Armiya Anas caught on tape 
a lot of these judges taking goat meat and goats in order to subvert and divert the course of justice. We are still trying to fix the good name of our judicial system. And if people like Eric Ma will come out and make such utterances, violent abuse of judicial power in the west of Yoni Kulendi, then I'm afraid we have a long way to go with our law system. Very, very. Yoni Kulendi, I want to say thank you so much for what you said. Come here. Some of these judges, they behave as if they were demigods. Nobody can talk against them. Did you find this photo? Justice Eric Ban. That is the man. Anas went to court and he made it look like Anas was standing trial. Yoni Kulende in his own words said that he violently abused judicial power. Look at this man. Why? According to Yoni Kulendi, this man displayed prejudice against Anas. Probably hatred for even the work of Anas. He calls it investigative terrorism. I pray that Anas Armiyao Anas will never be weathered down by some of these elements. Will continue to do his work as genuinely as he can. Yes, that's what I think. It's the Blackport, a.k.a. Kokushonomo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, we will be reading your messages in the interim. Hey! Whoa! It's the Blackport, a.k.a. Koko Shodaman here. We speak truth to power. Let's see your comments coming in. Right? Let's see what you think. Wanini boy says, Welcome back, Black Wayoy. Asensu Collins says, Wayoy, thank you for job well done. Yakubu Osman says, Good evening, Black Rasta. Na wungumti. Ne table table. Say, Ami. This is a prayer most see people truly like. When you go to any funeral or any wedding and the malam wants to make money, he just says, You know what table table is? Table table is table table. Something happens. You go to try and help. Tablet, tablet. Like when I was a little boy, I used to suffer from tablet, tablet. They will bring a toy, very nice toy. Children will play with the toy. They will break it and go and put it there quietly. I will come. Hey, toy, toy, toy! They then pop. They breaks in your hand. Tablet, tablet. Now we go to the tablet, tablet. Na wungumte ni table table. Ntakwa nya untakwa. Oba ni bema eku. Wako gidi 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 kodi. O munja ntakwa munja ntakwa no. Then you go and hold the man. O jai, bossu jai. 
Then the woman will pass behind you and slap the man. Bah! Then the man starts to punch you back and say, Hey! Did you hold me where you can't slap me? Hey! When you saw the one, bah! Bah! Now, me and I have a friend table. Table. Now, I'm going to Yeah, now I'm going to the table. Table. My God. Hey! Yo. Tijani Gengen says, It's been a while, my Godfather. I've been away for a while. I'm forever grateful, my Godfather. Harriet Amu says, Welcome, Black. Woyoy. Danny Man says, Woyoy. Uh, Mohammed Banjaya one says, Welcome, Legendary. These days, our time is clashing with Ramadan prayer. Asham. Mm, Asham, yo. To naungum tine table table. Anyway, we are always together in spirit. Preach on, Black. Woyoy. Signed, MC Scorpion. Inside Asham. It's still 5 p.m. But because of our power issues, left, right, and center, sometimes we start late. But my brother, it's still 5 p.m. If we have changed the time, we'll let you know. We do apologize for the late start these days. Danny Man says, I was disappointed when some of the family here subscribed to his gimmicks. Whose gimmicks? Is it Chada or Nanadu? Danny Man says, extension is a bigger project than to establish because it will cross many regional boundaries. I like that. I like it. He's telling you that to extend means the facilities are already there. All you need to do is to open something to join. But this one, the sea is going to cross regions. It will cross the eastern region. It will cross before getting to Kumasi. Why are you not thinking about rail transport, which would be cheaper to fix, rather than your so-called dredging? And as I told you, Dubai had to dredge trillions of tons of sand before hitting the seabed. And even that is considered easier because it's a sandy desert. But Ghana is working. And all the rocks are located, a major part of the rocks are located in the regions where you want to dredge. Kai people have ambitions. This is what is called inordinate ambition, an ambition that has no coordinates. Those of you who studied mathematics. Eh? Mary self one says, hmm. so Cheddar spoke out of misinformation. I believe that. Some that Olivia, these politicians are playing with their intelligence. Goswe Jata says, Black Rasta, we are listening live in Kumasi. Come here, where you It is what it is. In Ghana, you cannot critique anybody without people calling it. Uh, why do you hate him like that? Or how do you, why do you hate her like that? As if hatred was, I don't know. Any which way. Next story. Keep your comments coming in. We will read them in a second. But Imani, deputy losing credibility. He's called Bright Siemens. He's a man a lot of people respect and love. But for some time now, some people think that he is aligning with the wrong power. The party in power that everybody is frustrated about. He was a guy people saw as very sharp, astute, and very credible. But it looks like people are now beginning to wag their tongues against him. Bright Siemens. Some people have even said that he's actually a shadow member of the NPP. Therefore, anything that you heard him say in the past, he only did it purposefully, trying to get your support and then he will land the real deal it's like when you're going to catch a fish you throw some food around it and it will think that you are a friend and then when you land the net or the hook you catch it run the story my youth watch this my youth and this one is coming from ghana web he has been a disappointed lately he's been a disappointment lately netizens on x descend on bright siemens over 
15 million pound saga. What is it all about? Bright Seamus, the vice president of policy think tank Iman, Africa, has come under intense backlash from internet users after his recent post on social media. Seamus, in a post via his ex handle, alleged that a top notch Ghanaian politician was exposed in an irregular transfer of pound sterling in the United Kingdom on March 13, 2024. He wrote dark rumors circulating in a crowd of a politically exposed Ghanaian big shot knocking heads with British airport customs about millions of sterling being removed, being moved to the UK without the necessary paperwork. Frantic digging for trusted sources all over. Now the post by the Imani Africa Vice President immediately caught fire and made the headlines as most people assumed that the said exposed political figure is a member or associated uh, with the ruling New Patriotic Party, the NPP. However, checks by Accra Bay City FM with the UK Financial Intelligence Unit and the UK Immigration, previously known as the UK Border Agency, have revealed that the said incident did not happen as the two agencies have denied knowledge of claims suggesting the 15 million pound, uh, that 50 million pounds had been impounded from an individual from Accra. According to the UK Financial Intelligence Agency and the Immigration Agency, they have no records of any money being seized from any individual from Ghana. That should away. Well, they always say that. The other day, they said that Sensubwache had been caught with some money at the New Jersey airport. My check showed that it was not true. And when I called him, he said, ah, Black Rasta, you think by now this wouldn't have been all over the place? So some of these things are thrown in there because we have not checked things properly. I'm sure if Bright Siemens had taken his time to do the same checks that City did, he wouldn't have come out with that. But in all this, it's all about trust. Do we trust the UK authorities more than we trust Bright Siemens? Bright Siemens has not been very credible for some time now. A lot of people have spoken against him. But he still stands his grounds. I respect him. I love him. But I'm asking, do you trust the UK sources more than Bright Simmons? What is the source of Bright Simmons' writing? Can he come out and tell us what exactly it is? That way, we can go into the intellectual discourse. For now, it's quite vague. And it's a rude remark made against the nation. Especially that the UK authorities have come out to say it's not true. Dash it. Next story. Now the final story says Freddie Blay in hot waters. This is a man who talks as if he has water in his mouth. He talks as if he's left his brain at home and then he comes to talk this man. Some of them, when they are going to talk to the public, they forget their brains at home. So they move with the empty heads. They go, ah, 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 and drive everybody away. This was the man who brought in a lot of buses for his party. Several buses. This man. The same man here said that politics is so sweet that he would love to sell his own mother in order to do more politics. In fact, where I come from, they will call you Shejinya. In other words, you are a bastard child. Any child who wants to sell his mother, who wants to betray his father or mother, Shejinya, he's a bastard. Hey! Later he came out to say he was only joking. He's only a bastard who will joke with his mother like that. From that time, I lost respect for the dunderhead of an old man, this guy. He owned Daily Guide in the days. He still owns it with his wife. His utterances are not brilliant. He doesn't look intelligent. Cheddar is more intelligent than this guy. This guy. 
These are the people who are only interested in nyafu nyafu didism. They are politicians, and therefore you have to eat, 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 eat. These people I have no shred of respect for these people. Ha! Hey! In the days I was an avid reader of Daily Guide, it brought out the rot in the government when they were in opposition. Today it has become a Playboy magazine for the ruling party. Such a shame. Journalism is so skewed as to who is in power, depending on who is sitting on the throne, a newspaper could become Playboy magazine. Jesus have mercy. It was the hottest selling private newspaper in Ghana. Today, I wonder if people would even like to use it as a toilet paper. They doubt it. It's a shame. Why am I angry? Run it by you! In increments, in GNPC management allowances, reasonable. And this is what Freddie Blay is saying. Listen. Freddie Blay, the board chairman of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. Listen. He's a board chairman of the GNPC. Listen who has stated that the corporation's recent increases in allowance for their management members, management members and his part of the management are reasonable and approved. Freddie Blay, who is also a former national chairman of the New Patriotic Party, NPP, rebuffed claims that the increases were excessive. Listen to One, he said, they are justified, they are cool, they are very reasonable. And two, he said that, that the increases are not excessive, they are not too much. Watch it. He emphasized that these adjustments were implemented two years ago, contrary to assertions made by the North Tong MP, Samuel Okujoto Ablakwa, who suggested they occurred in 2024. Samuel Okujoto Ablakwa took to social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, to allege the GMPC management had raised their allowances by as much as 150%. Citing intercepted memos indicating a rise in daily hotel rates from $400 to $1,000. Can you imagine? So if somebody's salary was $10,000, as a board member, like Freddie Blay himself, if the salary was $10,000, now it's $25,000. 150% increase. If they were taking 20,000, now they are taking how much? 20,000, now they are taking 45,000. My brother. And he is a board chairman. When he increases, his own two increases. Dima Mindi. Enyen Takwa. Now, tell him to the tablet, tablet. Why? At a time that Ghana is running to the IMF, at a time that your currency is the third worst currency in the world, you are increasing your salary and the salaries of your cohorts by 150%. And he says, one, is justified, two, is not excessive, and it's okay. Look at the last paragraph. GNPC agreed unanimously to increase allowances. And it was not excessive. It was not unreasonable. The decision was made in 2022. So if someone is complaining about it and making it seem like it happened in 2024, they are only exploiting their, this uh, reasonable increase for their own gain. Hey. His father used to be Kwame Nkrumah's confidant. He comes from Elembele. He used to be called Elembele Mugabe. He had been there longer than any other person. Then he crossed carpets to NPP. His father was the CPP, the tradition of the Nkrumais. He crossed carpets. He didn't care. Traditions don't matter to him. It's nyafu nyafu the diesel. Dash it away. 
has been the black pot, aka Kukushunamo. Come here! Where we speak truth to power. Let's see your final comments, and we are done. Hi! Harriet Amu says, Black, more fire. Shadda should be realistic. I thought he was thinking of addressing basic needs like electricity, water, transport, etc. Come here! You think so, you do wise. Watch this. I was even saying that if he had said that he was going to dredge the Kole Lagoon, where we have Lavender Hill, anytime you are passing there, your nose is like there's an earthquake happening in your nostrils. When Trump's wife was coming, the AMA was begging that Lavender Hill should not be one of the roots of Trump's wife. <laughs> For obvious reasons. That is where Sodom and Gomorrah is located. Lavender Hill. They intentionally called it Lavender. You know what Lavender is? It's a sweet smelling aroma. But this is the opposite. People who live around there, they are naturally bloating because the smell, a mixture of Kobe, a mixture of raw shit, a mixture of rotting kinky, a mixture of akpla and fertility deji, everything is mixed. And when you smell it, it highs more than cocaine. Lavender hill. Baba Alassan said, I feel you, brother. And Ponsa Augustine says, Black Rasta, when are you bringing Malam Ustaz Jibril to your show? Very soon. Damascus Sunday says, Fire, Oja. And Ponsa Augustine says, Black Rasta, when are you bringing Malam Shamoon to talk about the 2024 elections? Okay. Very soon. Is that all you have for the messages? My name is Black Rasta. Please continue donating to the beautiful cause of patriotism. You can trust that every penny shall be used on this. I've spent so much of my personal money right now. I'm broke. It's my LM. And to there, Oman Mskakakra. Oman Jueten. Today, my prayer for you is simple. Ntakwa enye untakwa. Yamin peja unfriho. Come here. Anything that does not concern you is who fears him. Don't go and be part of it because there's something called table table. And most people like it so much. In their tradition, table table is serious. To God be the glory. It's been the black pot, aka Kuku Show No More, where we speak truth to power. Hey! Where you? Power? Ha, 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 